Hello, hello. So this is actually a part two of a two-part how to not get scammed on Grailed, um, I guess, update video. Uh, my original one, which is the most popular video on my channel, that one was specifically only for buyers, but I got a lot of sellers in the comments and in my Instagram DMs talking about like, hey, like this actually like fucks me over as a new seller, etc. So I will be making a seller guide as well as scams have been becoming a bit more prevalent for sellers now. Um, interestingly enough, they're getting smarter and smarter. So we have to like do certain things to combat against it and protecting um, our integrity as a seller, as either new seller, veteran seller, or sellers that have been kind of in the middle of that, um, I will be giving you my tips and tricks of what I've been doing on Grilled, what I've been sort of um, uh, kind of doing to protect my own ass, because I've definitely had a bunch of times where people try to charge back, etc. And I'll talk about what I did and uh, what you shouldn't do um, as a seller on Grilled. So, tip number one. As a seller, um, I'm not gonna lie, do it over grilled. I do understand that grill does take a heftier cut. So instead of like a 2.9%, it's like a 2.9 plus 6%, uh, where the 6% cut goes to grill as well as there's like a 50 cent like transaction fee. Um, I do understand the appeal of doing it over straight over PayPal. A lot of the times, if it's people that you know, or if it's you're able to trace back to either Instagram, name, you know, it gives you a little bit of like a cushion, but if it's over grailed straight up, I would say be a bit more weary because people do chargebacks. People say that there was a fraudulent charge and then PayPal kind of reverts the charge and then all of a sudden you'll wake up with like a negative balance on your PayPal or less money than you originally expected. Um, I've had this happen a handful of times and essentially what you have to do is one, you have to dispute it over PayPal as well as you have to message Grailed and keep them updated, keep the channel of communication open. Because Grailed, that extra 6%, actually gives you an additional insurance. So it's not just funneling into Grailed's pocket. For sellers, this is particularly valuable as an additional seller protection. Because sometimes PayPal isn't very good at siding with buyers. They want to create an environment which is great for um, great for buyers, not very great for sellers, I should say. What I would do is that just keep them updated. Let's say you do not win the case um, on the PayPal end of it. Take screenshots, take all the information that you can, uh, chat logs, etc. Especially if the buyer um, buyer themselves are like purchasing items left and right, you definitely want them to be like, hey, quarantine this account. They might just be doing massive purchases, massive chargebacks, as well as take screenshots of that chat log, etc., cetera, um, and then send that over to Grail talking about your situation. Be as thorough as you can, be as professional as you can as well, um, and then they will help you out because um, they'll run their own internal investigation, and if they side with you, they will send you that money. Um, the full money back to you, etc. Number two, I know this might seem a little bit excessive, but this is actually very valuable for high ticket items. It would be to record you packaging up the items, record the condition of the items, record the entire process of you packaging it up, etc. So if it's something that's gonna be going for over $1,000, over $500, maybe even something that's over $200, let's say you really wanna make sure that each purchase and each transaction is like safe. I would record everything from packaging it up, taping it up, the condition of the item before you put it in the box, etc. This is something that I've learned um, after being bitten in the ass because I've sold a brand new shoe um, and then after like two weeks or something, they told me it was worn and I was like, no, absolutely not. And then I was just like, okay, it's a headache. Um, and I was just like, yeah, sure, just send it back. They sent it back, it was worn. It was definitely worn. It was like, um, there was like black marks out like the sole, the sole was white. And I was just like, what the f And there's no way for me to tell them that like, hey, this was not worn, but you wore them and sent them back worn. That's ridiculous. Um, you know, stuff like that happens. So that's why I suggest recording, especially if it's a high ticket item. Another thing is ship your items with insurance and signature tracking. So the insurance is kind of optional, but let me talk about 
signature tracking. So the signature tracking makes sure that there is a recipient at the end of it who is able to sign for the package, as well as it kind of keeps the mail person accountable for when they're shipping out the item. Um, because they can honestly just toss it anywhere and they can just be like, you know, screw you, um, I'll just be doing whatever. Um, and then they just ship it out. Uh, with that happening, a lot of packages can either get stolen, misshipped, etc. So always ship it with signature tracking. Um, the little bonus is shipping it with insurance. I would suggest shipping it with insurance, um, especially if either you get scammed or if it doesn't get delivered or etc. It gets lost in transit, then you pretty much lost the merchandise and the money that you got for the merchandise because it's on you for uh, you to get that item delivered to the buyer. So for like, I think a, a friend of mine recently sold a laptop and it just got lost in transit and he lost that laptop, lost that money and he was just like, fuck, forever I will be shipping with insurance. So insurance, it isn't that much, but it's such a nice like peace of mind to have, especially if you're gonna be shipping with like USPS or UPS. Um, those two things, amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, I usually ship with USPS Priority. I think Priority gives you $50 just included with the price, but tracking, it's only like four bucks, five bucks, which I think to me, it's worth doing. It's, you know, it just makes my mind just a lot more peaceful. Sure, I could be saving four bucks per transaction, but I'd rather have it be safe on my end and on the buyer's end in case they're not home to pick up the package or to take the package from uh, their front door. So another tip would be make sure that your buyer is not a bot or not a scammer in any nature. Uh, so you can go through like the normal investigative process um, where you can look at the profile, talk to them. Let's say they send an offer or they purchase it straight outright, which a lot of bots and buyers do. They just purchase it outright. Even though let's say you price it at higher than market value, they just do it and you're like, great, great, great. Um, I say send them a message, a courtesy message, talking about like, hey, I'll be shipping this out soon, thank you so much, etc. Just making sure that there is some sort of response back, um, as well as buyers that just purchase with zero transactions. Don't always be uh, super suspicious and immediately assume that they're a bot or a scammer. Uh, they could just be a new buyer. But I say that there are like accumulation of things that kind of make it a little bit suspicious, whether it be zero transactions, zero items sold, no trend, or no profile image, doesn't respond to, in, or to messages, purchasing for a lot higher than market value, um, not not really responding either in like proper proper English, etc. Um, as well as it happens a lot of the time with international packages. Um, so that's why I'd say be a bit more cautious in nature. And last but not least, this is sort of on the sellers themselves. So the sellers, make sure you take full detailed photos of your items because it could come down to the point to where, oh, maybe the seller didn't notice that there was a scuff on the inside and you didn't happen to picture it or you didn't happen to take a photo of it and then you just tell them like, screw you, PayPal will side with them. PayPal will 100% side with them. You'd rather show them everything um, that they're getting potentially, whether it be the bottom sole or t-shirt, whether or not there's like holes anywhere, um, or like whether or not the pants have been altered, add measurements, etc. You wanna make it as transparent for them as you can so that they don't either charge back or file a claim, or they don't um, just get like really pissy with you and write like a bad review because if somebody writes a bad review that follows you for a little bit because you have to like recoup that um, that lost rating so you want to make sure as a buyer you want to protect yourself protect your seller's integrity or as a seller I mean you want to protect yourself so yeah those are five tips that I have learned through my years on Grailed and my, I think I have like 300 transactions or something like that um, on Grailed. So yeah, DM me on Instagram if there is anything that you sellers have any questions about or if there's anything that like you'd like to add onto the list. I'd love to have like an open dialogue on the comments where like sellers can chime in with their own like tips and tricks about like how to get avoid being scammed because we're all out here to try and make money, try and help ourselves, try and give each other kind of like the positive feedback, positive motivation, 
um, to kind of get out there and hustle. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are interested in the buyer's guide, I will have a link in the description as well as in the pinned comment down below. Uh, so yeah, let me know if you're interested in the buyer stuff and follow me up. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Kevin.ing and I'll talk to you guys later.